Why don't others offer zero-turn riders with steering wheel control and four-wheel steering? Who else? Nothing. 40, 40 minutes, minutes to go in this second half, and we'll have a final between Notre Dame and Quincy High. The Raiders are moving from right to left here in the second half, while the Blue Devils now have the wind at their back, and they'll be moving left to right. Mark, you said at the end of the first half, if Coach Jake Keller has the choice of only be down one nothing and to give up that goal early and then regroup, knowing that he would have the wind at his back here in the second half and a chance to level, that he wouldn't be too disappointed. No, especially the way they played the last 15, 20 minutes, I thought they were, you know, a lot more secure in the back, and... Uh, uh, you know, they, they kept, kept uh, tighter, tighter uh, marks on the, uh, the forwards of Notre Dame. And they had some chances, too, both uh, during the run of play and then also uh, off, uh, you know, three or four uh, set pieces in, in one corner kick. So uh, I thought that Quincy I played a lot better the last 15, uh, 20 minutes. And I'm sure Coach Longo uh, uh, talked to the, the Raiders about that. And they've, uh, Notre Dame came out here in the second half and, and uh, played a little bit better. Goal kick for QND, stolen by the Blue Devils. Blue Devils chance to counterattack on the near side. They want to get it up into the corner on the foot of Calvin. Calvin, it looks like they pressed her up front trying to get a little bit of action going here in the second half. Yeah, they, they got her at a right midfield, it looks like, and trying to get her uh, up into the attack and get some crosses uh, uh, into and to Coolman and also Bunchu, I thought, had a, a good last 20 minutes and hit that ball wide and made that save uh, uh, from, from Raby Happen. So another long throw in here from Quincy High. They just want to lose the box. Raiders have it surrounded. They'll shovel it out to the near side. Yeah, you brought up Bunch. I thought she was probably the most dangerous Blue Devil in the first half. And she certainly had that best attempt, that wicked shot that was just short of the near side post. Yeah, I thought she, she really had a, a good last 15, 20 minutes and was the, probably the most dangerous player for Quincy High. And, and Kuhlman uh, had a couple little uh, outside chances. And, and, and Kaylee has to come up big here for the Devils uh, along with Bunch. Carmen at the back tries to move it to the far side. It'll be out of bounds with a throw in coming up for the Raiders. QND looking to press that attack up that right wing offensively, the left defensive back. That's where they tried to get their offense from in the first half, and it resulted in a goal for Cassidy Foley, her team leading 17th of the year. That's where we're at now, 1-0. Raiders on top. Blue Devils working in the far side corner. Bunch tracking back, loses her footing, and it's going to be flag up on the far side by the linesman. That was out of bounds and a throw in for the Raiders. So cross off the cross, and the Raiders still dangerous deep on the far side. Stolen away now by the Blue Devils. They want to come on the counterattack. Raiders muff a chance to send it back in at midfield, and it's going to be a counterattack up the far side wing from the Blue Devils. Blue Devils can't get numbers to it, though. No support on the run on the far side as they had Eisenberg working. Now the Raiders track back. This Raider backfield has been equal to the task. They really only lost track of their marks of, what, once, maybe twice in that first half arc. Now the ball caroms in deep, and Raiders going to pick it up before it goes over the end line. Uh, the Raiders under Coach Longo have been pretty tight at the defensive end. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I think uh, Coach Longo would tell you that the one opportunity where the player was uh, uh, left unmarked, uh, uh, Morgan Fox had a great yeah. chance, and, and uh, here comes Bunch again. Yeah, yeah, Bunch working it in. She's, she's moved over now to this right side on this attack. She was dangerous from the left side in the first half. She gets it steered away from her. Bunch is now drawing a double team, it seems, from the Raiders defensively. They're kind of smothering her, bracketing her front and back when she's on the run. Up the near side, Foley feeds it to Ferris. This is a common tandem. Ferris brings it square on the right foot, takes it short, and it's going to be over the end line before it's hit in the side deck. Ferris turned around like she expected a foul to be called against her when she got free against the defense on the near wing and slowed her pace down. That took away any opportunity for her to work in at an angle in which she had just the cross left. She left it short. Jordan uh, you know, did that a couple times once last half, tried to play that, that ball over early and, uh, uh, you know, uh, looked like a couple shots and she could have taken it down maybe to the end line and allowed, um, you know, Hannah 
uh, to get in there and, and maybe make a cross to her rather than shooting that. But I, I think she was just uh, unhappy with the way that ended up. Stidebreaker uses her size to just mow down Calvin, and so the restart for Calvin and the Blue Devils, they want to press it up the near side sideline. Out of bounds, and a throw in for the Raiders. Raiders up 1 0, 30 minutes to go in this one. And QND with the only goal between these two in the first 120 minutes they played this season. When you talk about a Blue Devil team that can be opportunistic and a Raider team that's high powered, are you a bit surprised we've only had the one goal in an entire game and a half? Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm not so so surprised uh, by the 0-0 you know, score. I'm a little more surprised by this one just because uh, the way the game started. I thought, you know, I thought there'd be more goals uh, going in. I think there probably will be as the second half goes on. Now to Frerich. She, she comes, comes down, down this left, left side again. again. Shows, Shows the right foot, goes to the left, too far out in front of her. Frerich's pass to herself had no touch on it, and it's a day that you have to be exacting because of the conditions. A bumpy field, a wet playing surface, and if you're not spot on with your touches, even to yourself, like you're going to lose an opportunity, and that's what happened to Frerich. Yeah, she's had a couple uh, down this left side and even earlier in the game down the right side where I think she uh, just had a missed touch or two or... or uh, I didn't play a ball across uh, uh, as well as she'd like. And, and uh, one thing about her, she'll keep working, and, and she'll get more opportunities as the game goes on. Cut back by Foley. He sends a cracking right foot in just short of the near side post. Foley looked like she was going to feed to the corner to Frerichs again as she had on the previous two touches. That time she cut it back. The defense moved out of her way, and she just left it short of the near side. She gets a lot on every shot. For a girl who's not that big. No, and, and Cassie was, was really good about her is, is the way she hides and shields the ball and then very deceptive with her speed. Her first two steps, uh, she gets away from that defender to, to allow her a chance to uh, make a turn. And Eisenberg can't clear Ferrick's left foot, falls down as she tries to cut it back, gets up, right foot tries the far side corner and carries up. Spinning left foot attempt, no good for the Raiders, and now Foley will settle it down. Right foot on the half volley is wide, and that could have been a disaster for Boyd, the keeper for the Devils, but Notre Dame never got a shot on goal. Yeah, the, uh, the back four for Quincy High doing a good job of blocking shots, contesting shots, and, and eventually clearing that ball. In the first half, the Notre Dame Lady Raiders, 10 shots, 5 on goal, the only goal of the half by Cassidy Foley in the third minute. The Blue Devils, six shots, three shots on goal, one corner kick. Each team was charged with a couple of fouls. No one booked in the first 40 minutes. Less than 30 minutes to go now. Tenth and Jackson, if Notre Dame holds on to the one nothing lead. I'm Sean Seekers along with Hall of Famer Mark Thomas. And Bob Goff directed. Thank you for joining us online at QuincyJournal.com, our maiden voyage on the journal. Looking forward to improving our coverage of both the local sports and news scene. This is really just the tip of the iceberg for the coming video coverage at QuincyJournal.com. I'm sure Bob Goff will be relaying details as they become available. You can keep up to date uh, with him there as well as uh, the blogs from Team Quincy. And everybody else online at QuincyJournal.com. Lady Raiders on top, one nothing, 28-30 to go. Mark, who would you say has executed their game plan best in this? I know each team came in with different uh, strategic plans to get wins here this afternoon. Uh, in your mind, who's been, who's been applying the pressure and who's been able to execute that game plan if the Lady Raiders lose it out on your side of the I think Quincy and Dame's had the better opportunities as far as here scoring chances. Um, you know, Quincy High's got to be happy after giving up the goal the first three minutes of the game only to be down one zip. And then they kind of came along the last, uh, uh, you know, 20 to 25 minutes as we talked about to end the first half. But one thing about Notre Dame, they're always dangerous, as you can see with Cassidy here again. Foley crosses it into the middle. Left foot attempt, no good. Right foot settles. It just skies it over the crossbar in his hand of Thomas. Oh, Thomas missed the left on the first attempt. Had all the time in the world on the second one. Tried to pick the upper corner and just sent it high. Yeah, she actually uh, missed hit the first one and went on your right, her right foot, which is, is uh, her dominant foot. And uh, rather than uh, trying to tuck it away and put it on goal, she hit one and just got under it and went over the crossbar. So I'd like to have that one back. Scores get in there, and you start thinking, boy, I could just postage stamp this in the upper 90, and no keeper can get there. Sometimes you want to be too fine when you try to put it away. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, 
I, I've always preferred balls, uh, you know, hit low to the ground and, and, and placing them more and passing them in the goal rather than, than power, especially depending on where you're out of the field. And no different than what Cassidy Foley did in that uh, that first goal. She she hit that, struck it low and hard to the far post, and then found it. So um, any goalkeeper will say, you know, any any shot that's over the crossbar, they don't have, have to make, make a save, save on. on. So, um, um, you know, you uh, you want, you want that goalkeeper, goalkeeper to make a save, and you want to put the pressure, pressure on them. You, you just, just use an interesting, interesting term of a phrase. phrase. I've been covering, covering soccer, soccer for a lot of years at a lot of different, different levels. levels. I know I it might not seem like, like it all the time. <laughs> but, but you, you said, said you preferred to pass the ball into the goal. goal. I've, I've never had, had another goal scorer term it that way. way. You, you always talk about shots, where you like your shots located, where they wanted the ball past them so they could get their shot off. You describe it as just passing it into the goal. Yeah, I mean, actually, you know, you are shooting the ball, I guess, but I don't even think of it as shooting ball. I think of it more as finishing. finishing. And when, 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 you, when, when you're scoring, scoring goals, goals, you're actually finishing, finishing your chances. chances. And, and so, um, you know, your, your elite goal, goal scorers, scores, you know, they, they, they don't, don't need many chances to score goals, goals you know. And, and as, as, as you go through, um, you know, and, and, and you play, play better, better talent, better, better teams, and, and, and play, player, play higher, higher levels, the less chances you get to score goals a lot of times. So, you know, you see at the higher levels, you know, the English Premier League and stuff like that, you're – you know, you know your, your goal scores, scores you, you know they, they may only get one chance a goal a game and they they you know they make it happen so it's uh um you know it's, it's more of a finishing type of thing that you need to do and if not they, they just bite, bite the nearest the defender, defender. <laughs> very excellent yeah. start here yeah. <laughs> she tries to take it up the middle, feeds it on top and running onto it is fully she can't get there before it trails out of bounds suarez was the gentleman who was uh, penalized for biting, biting the, the defender, defender after he didn't get his way. Uh, they they had to down a 10-game suspension, suspension for did him. Did yeah, I didn't hear which. which uh, I figured, figured they'd come out with something, something but uh, brought back the days of uh, uh, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. So uh, uh, you don't see that happen very often. The glory days of hooliganism were usually in the stands, <laughs> not on the field. <laughs> yeah. so. Good, Good to see they got that under control. One other thing here. Lady Raiders on top of the Blue Devils. Blue Devils, Devils with possession, possession tracking, tracking to the far side, side trying, trying to work it up against this stingy defense, defense of Notre Dame. Now Notre Dame, Dame on the counterattack counter again. Thomas working down, down the far side wing, wing into the middle, where he's picked, picked up by the back, Carmen. Carmen. Carmen's, Carmen's been steady, steady for the Blue Devils here tonight. Not, Not spectacular, but uh, really she hasn't had to be. The one goal by Foley, she didn't have a chance to help out. It wasn't a case of a missed mark or anyone falling down. Carmen has been steady at the back for the Blue Devils. Yeah, her and, you know, I think Stephanie Bemelo has done a really good job the last 30 minutes to, uh, you know, using her speed and, and playing the, yeah, as a center back there and, and has really uh, helped, uh, um, you know, shore up the Quincy High defense after the first, you know, three, four minutes of the game. Congratulations to the other Raider teams that were playing here at the home complex tonight. Baseball was able to knock down a win, and the softball team just finished up a victory uh, as well. So congratulations to the Raiders. Blue Devils trying to spoil this party with a come-from-behind win here at 10th and Jackson. The first game of the year between these two was played at Flint Stadium, and that resulted in a nil-nil tie. Raiders, Raiders broke on top of this one in the third minute with Cassidy Foley's team leading 17th goal of the year. And now, just about 24 minutes to go, the Raiders are looking for an insurance goal. Sent up by Ulrich into the middle. Now, Fredericks, she's had many chances in this second half. She's in tight inside the six. And it'll be a corner kick coming up after Fredericks just knocked it off the defender on the inside. Carmen there helping out again. Yeah, Ulrich uh, uh, played a good ball in there, and I think that was Cassidy Foley. Uh, Flicking, flicking it on, on and, and Fred's having another opportunity. opportunity. Quincy Quincy doing, doing a good, good job blocking shots and clearing, and clearing the ball over the end line. line. So you'll, you'll see, see this ball be fired by Cassie. Cassie. She's, She's just laying up there. Another defender. What, what you do is is lob a ball at the rim for, for a dunk, and she's, she's hoping uh, Jordan Fred gets, gets in on the end of this. Fred will stay in the goal mouth all alone. They're going to fly it to the backside, out of the top of the 18. Header is loose. Blue Devils having trouble trying to clear. Boyd calling the defense. And, and trying to move her troops around as her goal has been under siege for the last eight minutes by the Raiders. Yeah, Mark Long would like to have that one back. Uh, you, you know, you, Frerich wants that ball in about anywhere from the, like, the 
you know, eight, eight to six, six yard line, line and go up and head that. that. It's, it's tough, tough to head a ball, ball from, you know, if it goes, goes to, you know, the 18, 16 yard line, line to, to score a goal uh, in the air with your head. head. So, Cass and Frederick's so tall, she's able, able to just not a lot of those down toward the ground. She's using the keeper low, just like you would with a shot we to your feet. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if he's a matchup problem for, uh, uh, any, any team, team. I, I, I saw, saw the first game of the year against Hawaii. She scored two two, two goals on corner kicks, kicks uh, uh, with, with her head, and those were balls just slided in about six yard line, line went up and headed over everybody. everybody. Ball loose in the middle of the field as the Blue Devils try to put together some offense. This second half, Mark, taking on a lot of the qualities of the first half as far as the Raiders dictating early and the Blue Devils trying to regroup after being pressed. Yeah, I mean, and I think Notre Dame, uh, or, you know, the Devils have done a, a better job defensively as far as staying closer to the marks and blocking shots and not allowing, a, uh, you know, the, the real good chances that, that Notre Dame had in the, in the first half, primarily the first 15 minutes of that half. Blue Devils have it along the near side sideline for Fox. Fox had probably the best scoring chance for the Devils in the first half, and she just had a... Uh, Unable to settle it on her initial attempt uh, with the left foot, and then took another chance with the right. She was that wide open from about 20 yards out, and wasn't able to make as much out of it as she would have hoped to. Fox trying to look dangerous on the near side, but she hasn't been served very many opportunities. Raiders now take the attack across to the far side, and the Blue Devils want to get right on top of it, escorting it out. Stolberg there with Abel. Bunch coming, coming back, back to help out. Bunch, Bunch we highlighted her play in the first half, but, but the more these forwards, forwards have to track back and help out defensively, this is not a fast surface here at 10th and Jackson. Jackson. The more it takes away from their ability to counterattack. Right. And, and plus it allows Notre Dame as a team and their defenders to get into Quincy High's end and zone and, 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 and keep them hemmed in and keep balls in. So when Quincy High clears them or goalkeeper punts them, Notre Dame's on it and they can, they can start the attack at a... Uh, much, much further down, down the field. field. And, and we, we talked talk about, as, as one, one of those balls comes loose, loose you talked, talked about Mark, and yeah, that Raider defense, defense playing here the, playing near the, the timeline, the, the center line, line rather, just able, able to knock that right, right back, back in. in. Now, now whistle, whistle on the near side. side. And, and this, this is going to be our first booking of the game. And the yellow card is going to be shown. And for the Devils, it'll be Morgan Fox going off with the yellow card here in the 60th minute. Now, this is another dangerous free kick, Sean. Uh, similar to a corner kick, not as far down the field, of course, but, um, you know, Quincy High will have to, uh, you know, kind of they bring their people up to the 18-yard line and, and try to keep you under aim high. But any ball flying in behind there, um, it's, a, it's a chance for the goalkeeper has to make a decision. Do I come out and get it? Or, or do, do I stay on my line and wait to see what, what happens? If you come, come out and get it and you have Frerichs go up, Frerichs is big enough and tall enough to, to head a ball uh, over Boyd. So uh, the critical play on this is, is a, a good cross from Cassidy Foley. Foley takes that one high. It's right outside the 18, headed into the penalty spot. And now Raiders knock it back to the near side. Foley a chance to get on it. Oh, she wanted to leave it short. The ground kind of bitter and kept her close instead of being able to lay it across and now the Raiders are off sides on the back side. Yeah, we went off sides when the ball got played back in but that's two, you know, uh, Cassidy and also Coach Longo uh, you know, the corner kick and then that free kick right there with Cassidy again, you know she would much rather have those inside uh, you know, anywhere from the 10 to the, the 6 yard line and make that keep them make a decision and put more pressure on the, the uh, back line of uh, Quincy High and give, give Jordan a, a chance to get up and head that ball. Now, Mark, we have the benefit of accompanying video tonight that we haven't had with our coverage before on WTAE. And I hope it will be easier to explain to a soccer novice or to someone just watching these young ladies play tonight the concept of offsides in soccer. Uh, you're the pro. You're the Hall of Famer. I'll let you tackle that concept. Well, I mean, basically, when the ball is played, the uh, uh, offensive player can't be behind the last defender of... Uh, of the defensive team. team. So um, uh, I guess if you want to compare it to uh, uh, to hockey, you can't be inside that blue line before uh, that puck gets, gets played in. Okay, In, in soccer, when that ball is played, no different than it was on, on that last one. Uh, Notre Dame played back in, and Cassidy Foley found herself in an offside position. 
Foley to the end line, takes, takes it across. across. No, no one home on the back post for what would have been an easy touch in. Raiders, Raiders looking for an insurance goal, up one nothing. That would have been a devastating opportunity. But all the support came streaming to the near side post, and no one was on the back post. Yeah, it's tough to tell as, as you're watching from a. Uh, here comes Quincy High again. Blue Devils on the attack. They're going to come right up the middle. Shot is going to be scattered from 25 yards out. Not much on that attempt from Coleman as it goes well high and wide. That is the first shot that the Blue Devils have had this half. Yeah. Kaylee, uh, um, your ball kind of popped up on her. She went and hit it and just uh, kind of floated over the crossbar. We'd like to you know, get that on goal and make Ravy make a save. Thank you for joining us online for our maiden voyage. Of local, local athletics, athletics coverage, coverage on, on QuincyJournal.com. Quincy <laughs> if you've made any observations on the technical side, we would love to hear from you. QuincyJournal.com. You, Quincy you can leave a comment in the comments section, and, section. and we're, we're looking forward to bringing you more and more coverage as we continue to innovate our local coverage, both in the field of athletics and in the field of news here at QuincyJournal.com. Testing out our new CityLink TV setup and. Hoping, hoping to bring, bring you more video, video coverage in, in the future. Bob Goff, the news director at QuincyJournal.com and at WTAE.com has a full pot of things he was going to be trying to accomplish with this advent of our ability to bring you video. And we appreciate the local sports scene being on his radar and the ability to bring you this bonus coverage at QuincyJournal.com. So we look forward to not only bringing you more live events in real time, but also improving our video coverage as we go along with this new feature here at QuincyJournal.com. Again, if you've seen any technical glitches or advice that you might have or input, we encourage you to leave a comment for us on the page at QuincyJournal.com. Bob here is our technical director tonight, and we thank him for his time tonight at 10th and Jackson. I'm Sean Seacrest along with Mark Thomas. one nothing lead for ladies of Notre Dame over the Blue Devils with just about 16 minutes to go in the match. That goal coming way back into the third minute mark. Cassidy Foley, her team leading 17th for the 9-1-1 QNE Lady Raiders. And to be sure, they've had plenty of opportunities to make this a comfortable lead, but either it's been outstanding saves from Alex Boyd, the senior keeper for the Devils, or the ball simply not bouncing the Raiders' way. Yeah, you know, puts you high up to the task, blocking a shot, or, or Notre Dame doing something where they just don't finish their chance. And, and when you're when you're up 1-0 in soccer, uh, you know, Anything, Anything can happen, and, and Quincy High will take this all the way with 15 minutes left and see if they can pinch a goal at the other end, maybe get a tie, or, or maybe even pinch two. But Notre Dame would like to score that second, maybe get a third, and, and, and have an easier way of it. But uh, uh, both teams battling out here, uh, you know, kind of tough conditions, cold and wet from all the rain we've had, and, and windy too, so both teams battling. A uh, 1-0 lead certainly, certainly feels bigger outdoors than it did indoors, though, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that would vanish, and you'd lose it in, in a matter of 30 seconds. What well, nothing lead for Notre Dame. Now the Blue Devils on top of it with Eisenberg. Eisenberg looking to start it up the pitch. She's in the middle looking for Bunch. Bunch, we mentioned how dangerous she was given the opportunities for service in the first half. Frederick screams through the middle, takes possession, just stops it with the long legs. Shows such adroit ball skills as she goes the other way in traffic. Now back side feed. Running on to it is Graw. Graw on the right foot. Loose at the 18. She unleashes a shot that spins wide to the right side. Good build up from Quincy Notre Dame. Starting with Jordan in the middle, turning in the center of the field as you saw. And played a good good ball off to Cassidy Foley who played one square to Abby Graw. And did everything right. Beat her person. Uh, right in the middle of the uh, uh, penalty box, went to shoot it, kind of bounced up and just kind of shanked it. But, uh, um, you know, good work there. And, you, you know, we talked about the field conditions, and that's what happens. Raiders not sitting back by any means. Up one to nothing with under 14 minutes to go here at 10th and Jackson. The sun's starting to set across the pitch, and the light's now coming on. Temperature has dropped about 10 degrees since our kickoff at 6 o'clock. Everyone in the stands bundling up, throwing their scarves around. I think this lady in front of us actually did the scarf in the first half that she's wearing now in the second half. <laughs> very uh, used to the vagaries of the weather here at 10th and Jackson. 
<laughs> yep. Left, left pass goes, goes just, just wide on the near side, side post. Not, not much of a shot. shot. That, that was, was just kind of a ball fed to the back side. No one was there. It'll result in a goal kick coming up for the Blue Devils. Boyd has been busy in this game. She's made three outstanding saves in my mind. One was on the second attempt by Frerichs in the first half. Ball run down the end line. Not enough room on the cross for the Raiders. And, and the, the other two were on long shots, shots that bounced in on her. And even though she hasn't just taken a barrage of shots continually, Mark, uh, Alex, Alex Boyd has had to be very aware of the surroundings and very nimble because she's they've had, had a, the Raiders have put a lot of kind of short shots on her. Yes, yeah, so they've had a lot of like half chances, yeah. Yeah. dangerous opportunities. And with this, you know, field conditions and, and the wind and, and swirling and, and balls in the air and, and dangerous players you're, you're really playing against, especially in, in Foley and Ferris that can turn and hit shots from anywhere at any time. She, she has to be on her toes. And I think she's done a good job uh, uh, you know, tonight. How dangerous is the wind tonight? You can see that the quarter flags on the far side of the field, on the west side, are not even moving, but those on the east side are just whipping in all directions. So that'll tell you how much the wind is swirling here at 10th and Jackson. A one nothing lead for the Raiders, 12 minutes to go. Knocked down on a physical contact that time was Markway as Ventral got into her on the back side. No call. And this is going to be knocked back out by Boyd. Comes loose, center, center of the field. Dangerous, dangerous chance for QND. Frerichs galloping down, down the center lane, but she can't collect the pass from Foley. Good, good, good effort there from Cassidy, Cassidy trying to find uh, Frerichs on that diagonal run, run that they like to do, playing it, and, and just, just off the handle on, it, on the ball on this, on this surface. Yeah, yeah we, we talked, talked about it in the first half, and the more you play on an uneven and bumpy surface, after all the rain we've had, it's soft, it's choppy, and it's just getting choppier. Uh, as these ladies play throughout this 80-minute match. Yeah, I mean, any time you play a ball, I mean, whether you're crossing it, whether you're passing it, whether you go to shoot it, um, you just really don't get a, a, you know, no different than in golf. I mean, you'd like the best line possible. Uh, you're not getting very good lines here when you go to strike a ball. So, um, you come up with a lot of divot on these on some pads. You've, you've seen that by some of the errant shots, you know, and, uh, or, errant, you know, the errant passes, errant crosses. Uh, so... It's, uh, uh, you know, they're trying to adjust, and, but it, it, it's tough to do, uh, you know, with a, a field like this. Flag up on the far side. The official giving it back to the Blue Devils and the Raiders all sides. So now the question starts to arise for Coach Dick Keller. How much do you push forward? How many extra bodies do you commit to the counterattack? And... When, when do you start? I think, I think with 10, 10 minutes, minutes to go, you know, not, not that anybody's going to pull the goalkeeper by any means, means right. but I think it's time for the Devils to start getting extra bodies forward. They have a nice moment of possession by Kuhlman on the near side as she is able to work it across. Now she plays it square, right into the middle of the box, turned by Vendrolo. Vendrolo wants to take the far side. There's Bunch we talked about. Misses with the left. And boy, that... Uneven playing surface you talked about, Mark, came back and bit Bunch because she was just about to tee up the best shot of this half. Yeah, of the a good turn there off of uh, Kuhlman did a good job, some footwork in here, made a, a pass in there, and, and, and Quincy High got a chance with Bunch. She did everything right, did the turn, went to shoot it, and, and just kind of uh, you know caught another uh, little bump there and bounced away. Blue Devils tracking back, having to send bigger numbers back, as you see the counterattack coming from the Raiders. Raiders, Raiders pushing, pushing right, right up through, through the middle. middle. Now, I've, I've been, been impressed by how much the Lady Raiders, Raiders under Coach Longo have varied their attack tonight. We highlighted early in both halves. They were probing that right offensive side, left defensive side of the Blue Devils. But they played ball square. They changed the point of attack. And just when they kind of lulled the Blue Devils into looking outside, they've gone right up the middle with Foley and Frere yeah, a couple of times. Correct. And, and, and they really like to get, if they can get a ball swung from one side to the other and they can switch it diagonally, uh, they, they find that they can have matchup problems, uh, you know, uh, with, with Foley and... and uh, a uh, Hannah Cobb and also uh, uh, Frerich running, running diagonally and getting those balls through or over the top and one-on-one and and on one with Keeper. The, the offense for the Blue Devils has been 
Well, well kind, kind of few and far between. between. They, they had, had the, the opportunity, opportunity with Bunch just a moment ago. First half, Bunch, Bunch had, had an opportunity. Fox had a couple of opportunities. But they, they haven't had nearly the concentrated buildup uh, that, that the Raiders, Raiders have enjoyed here tonight. Uh, what, what have you thought of how the Blue Devils have counterattacked? Well, I think we kind of expected that with, you know, uh, Jordan Eisenberg, you know, uh, Arguably the devil's best player, and then uh, McNay. McNay's out. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we kind of thought that, but I think they've done a good job defensively. And now they get a free kick here, and uh, right, right on the edge of the penalty area. area. So um, uh, this, this is what Coach Dinkeller uh, is hoping for. Not a player down, but a, uh, an opportunity. So we're going to have a time stopped here and uh, a dangerous uh, um, uh, position here and opportunity for uh, for the Devils. Boy, the devil's slow to get up. I believe that's that now McNay. Well, you got Garkey on the ball, number five. And yeah, she was the one who was slow, slow to get up. I thought that might have been Anna McNay, but it's Garkey. She was very slow to get up, and she's kind of working her hip there. And Carmen had gotten forward as well. So you got Eisenberg, and you know probably going to be maybe taking the shot, or maybe Dumbrella. And so let's see here what we got. We got Bruce over the top now. You got Common coming over, and yeah. they're looking at Coach Dinkel to see what they want. So Fox is lingering behind him as well. You kind of practice these, so it's a direct kick. She'll be shooting this ball. Notre Dame has five in the wall, and um, so Common put over all the restarts for him. No reason not to do it here. Kalman lining up the right foot, five-man wall in front of her. Brady moves the defense out. She wants a clean look. This is just a foot outside the box. Best scoring chance for the Devils. Kalman goes over the top and air mails it over the crossbar. She's just going to pull it back down when she got it over the wall. No, just kind of lean back a little bit, and uh, that, that's what made the ball sail. So would have liked to see her, especially on a cold night, you know, hit that lower and harder, and, and – uh, you know, if you could hit it just past the wall, uh, make that keeper make the save. Well, it seems to me people try to go up and over and then bring it down. That's got to be tough. It looked like there was room because we had a good angle from the box where we're at for her to maybe go around the outside of the wall on the, on the short side. Ravy had vacated the near side of the goal. Correct. I think she uh, just got under it a little too much and didn't hit it uh, like she wanted to. Seven minutes to go in the match. one nothing lead for Notre Dame. Jeers from the... Blue Devil fans after the whistle at the midfield. And the Raiders will have a restart under no pressure. Keep your eye on QuincyJournal.com for our next video coverage events. Quick restart. Well, that's going to be sent in by Ulrich. And it's knocked around. Now it comes loose onto the foot of Obert. Obert wants to play it back out. But Ulrich has done a great job of setting up long services out of the back line for the Raiders. Stepping over his Foley. She's got the goal in the third minute of the match. She's going to be pushed on the outside. She escorts it out. It'll be a corner kick coming up. Second corner kick of the match for Notre Dame with now about six minutes to go. Yeah, but she can get this ball up into She hasn't hit a good one. Uh, uh, look for uh, Stonebreakers going in there now. And also, uh, uh, you know, Ferris to try to get on the end of this. So. Setting up an in-swinger into the wind. Pops out to the 15. Frederick comes running in, throws a hard shoulder block, and it's going to be a foul coming out against Jordan Frerichs. Yeah, she went in kind of late there and caught the uh, Quincy High player uh, uh, maybe with her shoulder, and, and Quincy High fans would like a card similar to what uh, the Quincy High player got uh, when she fouled uh, uh, Foley. And, uh, I don't think Jordan meant to do it uh, on purpose. I think she was just late with the challenge and caught her uh, with her shoulder. But uh, uh, I don't know who that is, but hopefully uh, they're okay on the field. So They have brought the medical personnel out onto the field. As we have a one nothing situation here, we'll step aside for just a moment. You're watching live coverage of QND versus QHS Lady Soccer at QuincyJournal.com. Only four-wheel steering. Who else puts electronic power steering in lawn and garden tractors? How many others deliver the beautiful Cub Cadet Signature Cut? Prove to yourself what makes Cub Cadet the smartest choice. Take a test drive at your local dealer. There's no better time to get a Cub Cadet with smart financing options and incredible deals. Visit your local dealer today to see what makes Cub Cadet the smartest choice. 
Imagine your world without glasses or contacts. Discover what LASIK can do for you. Call IEC for your free LASIK consultation. LASIK, your vision is our focus. International Eye Care Center. So what is the more indoors and more? Sunrooms! Stop the mosquitoes and their winged and crawling friends with your Sunspace three-season sunroom from Doors and More. The telescoping four-track window system allows you to convert your existing screen porch into a three-season room and enjoy the outdoors regardless of the wind, rain, or even the sun. Or Doors and More can install your new sunroom on your existing porch, deck, or from the ground up. Call us for a free no-obligation quote at 22 Doors or come see our beautiful showroom on South 36th Street. Doors and More. What's the more? Windows! Ted the Jackson, the spot of tonight's cross-town derby between the Raiders and the Devils. A one nothing lead for the Raiders in QND. I'm Sean Seacrest along with Mark Thomas. Bob Goff producing for us on the video side at QuincyJournal.com. Garkey was able to get up under her own power and walk off. She had, Mark, just been uh, drilled about three minutes ago on the offense event, and as all flight into the corner, an easy leap and grab for boy takes the opportunity away from the Raiders. Good to see Garkey get up after another hard hit. Yeah, the Ferris came in late there, and it looks like she caught her with a shoulder to Garkey's head, so hopefully she's okay and, and uh, can get back out there. Raiders out shooting the Devils in this one, 14 to eight, according to my numbers, and the Raiders up one to nothing with now five minutes to go. Foley takes it down into the corner, steps over it, and lays it over the end line. That certainly isn't what she wanted to do. She was hoping to bang it out off the defender for a corner, but instead it'll be a goal kick coming up for the Devils. Yeah, at first I thought she was taking it down the corner to milk some clock, but then uh, she just kind of kicked it over the, the end line. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, not quite, quite sure what she's trying to do there. there. You'll see that with uh, you know just a couple of ticks left. They'll take it down there to shield the ball and try to essentially run the clock out, but too much time left for that at this moment. Step over by Graw. She wants to work down in the corner. We'll give it a go. Now Foley on it. Foley on the left foot takes it back into the corner. Foley drawing the defense from Vedrolo. They're working right around the flag. Foley on the turn. The official runs into her. I don't know why the center man would come all the way over to the near side, but he ran into her. Now Frerichs atop the box. Ball is loose. Three devils surrounded and knocking away. Knocked back in by Shelby Ulrich. Ulrich has done a great job of sliding balls in from midfield to hit her attackers on the run throughout both the first and second halves. Stolen away by the Raiders on the far side. And now the Devils with a man down. That looks like number 24, Paige Abel. And the Raiders knock it out over the far side sideline. Yeah, Abel is had, up. had a knee issue. And uh, uh, she's gotten up slow a couple, couple times tonight. Clock continues to run down to three and a half to go. As Notre Dame was up one to nothing. These two teams will both play in the uh, Blue Devil tournament coming up this weekend. So the Blue Devil tourney. So a chance for them to meet maybe one more time. Yeah, I didn't know if they met, uh, if they both go through, or, or how it works, or if they're in different, different brackets. So. I haven't seen the uh, final draws on the pool play for that yet, so hard to tell, but certainly the potential to meet again coming up this weekend right here in Quincy. Wind whipping out of the north now, going north to south, or rather south to north, excuse me. You see the Stars and Stripes standing at attention in midfield. Just next to the scoreboard. Sun is setting now behind the trees off to our west. And the Raiders trying to bring down the curtain on a one nothing win over the Blue Devils. Fed up to the near side. Raiders back with plenty of defenders. And the Blue Devils, Mark, really haven't committed the extra bodies forward. Now foul whistled against the Devils. That'll... Send him retreating after McNay stepped in. 
No, I mean they might have pushed uh, you know one more forward up to to get three, but uh, as far as team wise, they haven't really changed a lot of their formation. I thought maybe at the five or six minute mark, you know, Coach Dean Keller would, but uh, uh, really hasn't had much possession of the ball to do so. Here's another service coming from Ulrich. Knocks it long, going up for it in traffic. Carmen, she has done great work. Now Anna McNay. The substitute, the junior midfielder, knocking it down, bringing it up the near side for Bunch. Bunch on the attack, trying to get around the defense of Markway. And Bunch starting to force the issue. Bunch certainly feels the urgency of the moment. She's really picked up her pace in the last five minutes. Yeah, she, she's played with good energy all night and really has has been uh, Quincy High's most dangerous and creative player. So, um Quincy High needs a good flighted ball in here and, and see if they can get it equalized. Garkey back on the field. She hits it with the right. This one slides toward the near post. Trying to look inside, find Cowan, who pushed up from a defender's spot to a midfield attack spot in the second half as Coach Dick Keller is trying to create more offense for the Blue Devils against the defense of the Raiders. Yeah, and Coach Longo, you know, taking time, making a sub. You see him put up another player there, and that, that kind of kills some time off. And, and, you know, you saw him do this in the state tournament, and it's a, it's a chance for a coach to take some time off the clock. Frerichs on the touch after the head ball feed from Foley, and it'll be swept away out of bounds and another throw in for Notre Dame. Now with the sun setting, the temperature is really starting to plunge with the wind whipping. And while the players on the field are warm from running around, it's become a huddled mass in the stands as they watch from the ever-warm aluminum. Now to Raby, the keeper for Notre Dame, picks up the roller on the near side. Before Cowan or Bunch could get in and take a chance, she was under a little pressure from Venverlo that time. As those three have really been the main attack trio for the Blue Devils tonight with Jordan Eisenberg missing this game due to injury. Eisenberg missed the 4-1 loss to Davenport Assumption as well. And with now just seconds remaining on the clock, Blue Devils trying to steal one leg, pressuring it in. Nice deflection! And the Raider defense holds up in the waning moments. Clear away, and the Raiders have a 10-game win streak. They take it down over Quincy High, one to nothing here at 10th and Jackson on the campus of UND. In the third minute, it was Cassidy Foley with her 17th goal of the season. Notre Dame outshoots QHS by the final of 14 to nine. Notre Dame had just a couple of shots on goal in the second half, but they were more concerned with making sure they didn't get beat back defensively. QHS never put extra bodies toward the net in the waiting moments, Mark. And so even though Bunch had a chance, we saw Venerlo with a chance, and, and Common with a chance on a direct kick, uh, it just wasn't to be for QHS tonight as the defense of Notre Dame was good enough. Yeah, not, not a lot of chances throughout the, the match for Quincy High. And, uh, Notre Dame, you know, deserved the result and winning the game. I think, uh, you know, both teams can take some uh, uh, stuff from this game. Though. I think uh, Coach Dean Cowell, without two other starters, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, probably arguably uh, their best player uh, not playing, you know, uh, held Notre Dame to, to one goal. Goalkeeper, I think, played well. Um, I think Notre Dame uh, uh, on a 10-game winning streak and, and happy with the win, but uh, uh, I think they want to progress to, you know, uh, where they're, they're at in a few weeks, uh, playing the postseason at their best. And, and tonight I don't think they played the best. They definitely didn't finish as well as they could have. They had a lot of chances and created some opportunities. Partly the field is to blame for that. It's tough to play and, and tough to, to create and finish some chances. But uh, uh, I'm sure they'll be happy with the win, uh, but, you know, uh, can find areas where they can improve. Good luck to both teams as they go forward and prepare for the postseason. Lady Raiders, of course, will do so as the defending state champions in Class 1, and the Blue Devils get ready for play in Class 3. With the win tonight, Notre Dame now 10-1-1. The Blue Devils fall to 6-6-2 six, six, and two on the season. Both will play coming up this weekend in the QHS tournament. That's going to be at Flint Stadium here in Quincy. Come out and support your local soccer teams if you want to see more of two very talented squads. For Mark Thomas, joining me here tonight, I'm Sean Seacrest. Thank you for spending some time with us. Our executive producer and director, Bob Goff, Alex Goff on camera number one.
everyone. This has been our maiden voyage to bring you expanded video coverage at QuincyJournal.com. We'll keep you abreast of upcoming events, whether news or athletics, that we plan in the future. Until then, good night from 10th and Jackson, where the Raiders of QND knock off the Devils one nothing. How do you reach the best hunting, the best fishing, and the best views? On a Yamaha Grizzly, the only ATVs with true four-wheel drive, downhill engine braking, and power steering. The Yamaha Grizzly 550 and Grizzly 700 FIEPS. And introducing the new Grizzly 450, now with electric power steering. Built to get you there and back, no matter where there is. Check it out today at Traders t and Yamaha 930 Main Quincy, where our name really does mean a great deal. It's back. The Wright Furniture Tent Event. Rink lockers, $169. Dining room chairs, $25. Ceiling queen sets, only $295. Black steel sofa and chair sets, slashed to only $545. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only. Rain or shine, be there. Why don't others offer zero-turn riders with steering wheel control and four-wheel steering? Who else puts electronic power steering in lawn and garden tractors? How many others deliver the beautiful Cub Cadet Signature Cut? Prove to yourself what makes Cub Cadet the smartest choice. Take a test drive at your local dealer. There's no better time to get a Cub Cadet with smart financing options and incredible deals. Visit your local dealer today to see what makes Cub Cadet the smartest choice. Imagine your world without glasses or contacts. Discover what LASIK can do for you. Call IEC for your free LASIK consultation. LASIK, your vision is our focus. International Eye Care Center. You adore and love was made for me and you. How do you reach the best hunting, the best fishing? And the best views? On a Yamaha Grizzly, the only ATVs with true four-wheel drive, downhill engine braking, and power steering. The Yamaha Grizzly 550 and Grizzly 700 FIEPS. And introducing the new Grizzly 450, now with electric power steering. Built to